Yeah. Cowabunga, dude. <laughs> I know, I kind of am a little bit rusty, but I just act like they do the moves and what have you. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Duel, better known to you as the Big D. This time around, I am going to bring to you my next green movie series. This time, it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know, as a kid, I grew up with the Turtles. I had the, some action figures. I played the video games. I've watched their animated series, which I do have on DVD. I'll talk about that sometime. I don't have it confirmed for the schedule, though. But I might in the future. Uh, I grew up with even their serial even. And, of course, the movies. Which is what I'm going to start off with. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 1990. Actually, this is kind of going to be early for its anniversary, which is the end of the month on the 30th. So, happy early Big 3-0 to the first ever Ninja Turtles movie. Originally released by New Line Cinema, produced by Golden Harvest. And, well, several other studios. This, of course, is the, the first ever film to be based on the fictional superhero team of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Anyway, I love this movie. It was absolutely a fun blast. Anyway, let's see now. Now... The film stars Judith Hogue and Elias Cateas. I may be pronouncing the name wrong. Now, Hogue plays Abra O'Neill and Cateas plays Casey Jones, in which unfortunately this was his only film until the second Michael Bay film. But that'll be explained later on. Yeah. Anyway, and then of course we have our title characters. Now they're actually performed in suits though, but well, I'm not going to tell who does the performances though, but the voices are pretty well known. Voicing Leonardo is Brian Tochi, best known for playing Tigar on, T on the Saturday Morning 70s series Space Academy, as well as play playing Takoshi in Revenge of the Nerds. Playing Donatello is the, well, kind of the more bigger one of the two Corys, Corey Feldman. Voicing Raphael is Josh Pays. I'm not too familiar with um, this person. And voicing Michelangelo is none other than Cousin Oliver of the Brady Bunch and Wiz of Kid Video fame, Robbie Wrist. Yes, I didn't know he actually did this. I mean... <laughs> and then, of course, we have Kevin Clash. Voicing Splinter. Yes, you heard me correctly. Yes, as in the Kevin Clash who was doing the voice for a Saurian, who would be even bigger for voicing a Saurian little red monster on Sesame Street. And of course, he would go on to voice Baby Dinosaur on TV's Dinosaurs as well. Anyway, now, our members in the cast includes James Saito as Oroko Saki, alias the Shredder, while David McSharon does, does the voice of the, does the voice. And then we have Toshishiro Obata as Shredder's second in command, Tatsu. And as Michael McConaughey does the voice. Yes. I gotta say that while we may not have gotten some of the actual other good villains from 
from Trash Side, like Roxanne Bebop with Bud. Hey, I was cool with. I mean, Tatsu was a good one. But for now, let's get on with this review. Now, our story starts out with chaos going around New York City. The mysterious ninja group known as the Foot Clan are up to no good. April O'Neil. Report for Channel 3 News correctly theorizes that the mysterious group is behind the crime wave that's rising. She is soon attacked by the foot in the subway. Yeah, where we hear one of famous, some of my, one of my favorite lines. We've been looking for you, Miss O'Neill. Yeah, but soon Raphael, who goes out uh, dressed in a trench coat and what have you. And, of course, um, he encounters Casey Jones along the way, and boy, this guy is kind of brutal. Almost close to how he was in the cartoon series, but hey, it's pretty cool and all. But anyway, he manages to defeat the foot and carries April to the Turtles' hideout, unaware that one of the, the Foot Clan is following him. Now, their master of a rat, Splinter, explains to April that he and the turtles were once ordinary animals, but the courts were mutated into intelligent creatures by toxic waste. And trained by him in the art of ninjutsu. Soon they escort April home, and but when they return, they find their hideout is ransacked and Splinter was kidnapped. So they go to April to spend the night there. Danny, the delinquent son of April's supervisor, Charles, works for the foot. And after bailing Danny out of jail for robbery and tr truancy, he stops, Charles stops April's apartment where Danny glimpses one of the turtles hiding he, and reports this shredder. So apparently... Raph goes to the roof of April's apartment building where the am where the foot ambushed him after he had an argument with Leo. Now okay, now he now I see. Now then He is knocked unconscious and the turtles scramble to then fend themselves, assisted by Casey Jones. Suddenly the Billing catches fire during the fight, and they retreat into a farm that belonged to April's family. But unknown to April, she got a call from Charles saying that she was fired. So, uh, they, so they go to this farm, and Raph recovers while the turtles train, and, well, April and Casey kind of fall for each other. Yep. And, I mean, um, Don's trying to get this here old pickup truck fix, well, go into gear as Casey's trying to fix it up. He, found, he gets it going and it crashes through the garage door. He's like, it works. <laughs> oh, yeah. This also had a good few good months. Let me reverse back now. Another cool thing that I liked in the movie is when they ordered from... Mikey's waiting for some pizza from Domino's. Yeah, that was a sponsor for this, I do believe. And apparently gives just doesn't give him nothing else because he's a little late and what have you. And soon, um, they Mikey throws it to the air. Leo cuts it with his katanas. Oh boy, that is so funny. Yeah, I also liked Mikey when he does his moves once one of the foot so foot clans doing some of his moves with his nunchucks. Oh wow. But anyway Back to the movie. Leo contacts Splinter through telepathy uh, and the turtles return to New York to rescue him. And Danny has secretly been taking counsel from Splinter, who tells him the story of his master, Hamato Yoshi's murder by rival ninja Oroko Saki over the love of a woman while Splinter was just an ordinary rat. During the struggle, his cage was broken 
and he lunged at Saki's face, clawing and biting him. He threw Splinter to the floor, Saki did, and took one swipe with his katana slicing one of his ears. Danny learns that sh the Shredder intends to have Splinter killed. He and Casey set him free as they return. And Splinter reveals to the other teens who have been recruited by the foot that the Shredder has been brainwashing them to do his dirty work. Realizing this, they all resign. Now, you've got five seconds to stop because I'm going to the end. Stop. Once this countdown stops and you stop this video, go to the time in the description box and fast forward to avoid hearing the, the ending to this. Here we go at five seconds. Okay, if you didn't do this, you were warned. Shame, shame, shame. Okay, here we go. Anyway, the turtle engaged the foot in battle. Easily the foot defeating every one of the Foot Clan ninjas. But upon facing the Shredder, he defeats him single-handedly. Now, I'll get to this, back to this in a moment. I mean, I like it when... I I think it's Mikey who beats when I was... Like, I love being a turtle! Yeah. But, but now back to the final battle. As Shredder plans to kill Leo, Splinter appears and challenges him to a fight. He names Shredder as a Roku Saki. He removes his mask and touches his scar, remembering how Splinter gave it to him. He charges Splinter to spear him, who ensnares the Shredder's Yari with Michelangelo's Nunchaku, leaving him dangling over the roof's edge. In a final attempt to kill Splinter, Shredder throws a tanto at Splinter, but when Splinter reaches to catch it, his grip is released and Saki falls into a garbage truck and Casey pulls the lever accidentally to activate the competitor, crushing the Shredder. And as the police arrive and arrest the foot soldiers, the teens tell them the location of the foot hideout. Reunited with Splinter, the Charles watches April and Casey kiss, and, well, they say all sorts of different things, like cool and, yeah, and all that stuff like that. And Splinter's like, I have always liked Cowabunga. Yeah, really cool. Uh, give me a moment, I'll be right back. Just a sec. Okay, I'm back. Now, that bit was... The end, but now I got the last bit. Leo's like, we were awesome. Mikey's like, bodacious. And, and gnarly, radical, totally tubular dude, etc, etc, etc. And that's when Splinter's like, I have always liked Cowabunga. And the turtles give a high five, Cowabunga! <laughs> and Splinter's like, ha, 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 I made a funny. <laughs> and that's how the movie goes. Now then, what I think of it, I love this movie. This is one of my top favorite superhero movies of the 1990s. I really do love it, actually. I mean, you know, it, some of the movie has a little hit or miss, but more hit than miss, though. So, would I recommend Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Most definitely. You need to see this movie. You will absolutely love it. I love the performances, the one well, the cast of voices and what have you. Judith Hogg was good. Yeah, so was well Casey Jones and what have you. Unfortunately, they got a different actress to play April for the next movie. The movie did pretty well for New Line, and it become their next big, their third big franchise, right? Aside from Nightmare on Elm Street and Critters. So, and it will go on to have two sequels. Now I will review the next one tomorrow. But anyway. I think the direction thing was pretty good. The the atmosphere was good. And what have you? Um, the 
the action was real good, and so was the music and what have you. Enough said. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles will, will go on to become the most successful independent film of all time until the Blair Witch Project surpassed it years later. But still, nonetheless, I love the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You need to check it out if you haven't. But anyway, that's going to do it for my review of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. What did you think of the movie? Please feel free to tell me in the comment section. Like and subscribe to my channel as well. And be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I continue the series with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. The Secret of the Ooze. Which is definitely another good movie. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Now, if you liked what you saw, you can check out some of these other vids. Now, in the upper left-hand corner is my review of Shrek the Third, the third installment of the Shrek series. It, you can check out the other two as well. And the upper right-hand corner is my review of Shrek Forever After, plus a ranking of the Shrek franchise, and the, which I did yesterday. And then the bottom left-hand corner is my ranking of top 90 superhero movies, which, of course, you'll see the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie on there. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button to click for more fun with moi, the Big D. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying see ya.